If you didn't like the geometric interpretation of Grover's algorithm, there's also an algebraic interpretation that some people find more useful. So the algebraic equivalent of our state vector psi r lying in the s prime x star plane is that all basis vectors aside from x star have the same amplitude. We'll call it alpha sub r and x star has its own amplitude. We'll just call that alpha sub r star. So let's look at what happens to these amplitudes as we apply the subroutine. The first step is applying the oracle, and it's pretty easy to see what that does. It negates the coefficient in front of x star, and it leaves all other coefficients unchanged. It's a little trickier to figure out what the Grover diffusion operator does to these amplitudes, but it's not so bad if we break it down. Remember that d is equal to two times the projection onto the uniform superposition minus the identity operator. So the first step in figuring out how d affects these amplitudes is to figure out what taking the inner product of s with o acting on psi of r is. The coefficient in front of all of the computational basis vectors in S is 1 over root 2 to the n. So if we take the inner product between these two vectors, we get 1 over root 2 to the n. That's the contribution from S times negative alpha sub r star plus alpha sub r for all the other 2 to the n minus 1 basis vectors. And it turns out there's a nice way to interpret this quantity. So let's look at the average amplitude of the state psi of r after it's been acted on by the oracle. It's going to be 1 over 2 to the n, because there's 2 to the n states that make it up, times negative alpha sub r star, the contribution from x star, plus 2 to the n minus 1 times alpha sub r. That's coming from the 2 to the n minus 1 other basis states aside from x star. So we can see that this inner product is actually equal to root 2 to the n times this average amplitude of psi of r after it's been acted on by O. So the projection onto the uniform superposition is equal to mu sub r times the sum of all the basis vectors. The root 2 to the n gets canceled out because the coefficient in front of all the basis vectors in the uniform superposition is 1 over root 2 to the n. So finally, the result of applying the subroutine to the vector psi of r is 2 times mu sub r times the sum of all of the basis vectors minus O acting on psi of r, which is just negative alpha sub r star times x star plus alpha sub r times the sum of all the other basis vectors aside from x star. And this is, of course, psi of r plus 1, the state we're in after applying the subroutine r plus 1 times. Let's look at what happened to the amplitudes after applying the subroutine. The new coefficient in front of x star, alpha sub r plus 1 star, is equal to 2 times mu sub r plus alpha sub r star, the old coefficient. And the coefficient in front of all other basis vectors, alpha sub r plus 1, is 2 times mu sub r minus alpha sub r, the previous coefficient in front of all of these basis vectors. I'm going to slightly rewrite these. The first one as mu sub r plus the quantity mu sub r minus negative alpha sub r star. And the second one as mu sub r minus the quantity alpha sub r minus mu sub r. And I'm doing this because it makes it easier to understand what the subroutine has actually done to these amplitudes. I think it's easiest to see if you make a plot of the amplitudes. So I'll put x on the x-axis and I'll put the coefficient on the y-axis. So initially our system is in a state where all basis vectors aside from x star have the same amplitude and x star has its own amplitude. Uh, we'll just make it slightly larger than these other ones. Then after we apply the oracle to the system, the coefficient in front of x star is negated. So this is now what the coefficients look like. And this dotted line here is mu sub r, the average coefficient. 
it's going to be slightly less than alpha sub r because of the negative contribution from the coefficient in front of x star. So on the previous plot, it's of course in the same place, it's slightly below alpha sub r. So this height here is the difference between alpha sub r and mu sub r, so alpha sub r minus mu sub r. And then this larger height here is the difference between mu sub r and negative alpha sub r star. And these are precisely the quantities that are added or subtracted from mu sub r to get the new coefficients. So as far above mu sub r as alpha sub r is, alpha sub r plus one is that far below mu sub r. And similarly, as far below mu sub r as negative alpha sub r star is, that's how far above mu sub r alpha sub r plus one star is. So what applying the subroutine does is it reflects these amplitudes about mu sub r. And what this means is that the amplitude of all basis states aside from x star gets smaller and the amplitude of x star gets larger. That's why this is called the amplitude amplification trick. And the idea is that we keep doing this until the amplitude of x star is large enough that we have a reasonably high probability of collapsing the system to the state x star upon measurement. Exact same ideas in the geometric interpretation because they're the same algorithm, just two different ways of looking at it. 